Welcome to week seven in Busy 1071 Online. We have completed what I consider to be the first half of the course, even though it's not technically half. We are now moving into the much more real estate oriented side of things. And we are going to start with lead management, even though we haven't even kicked into the marketing side of things yet. And then we're going to get into the business side of it and the paperwork and all that. Because we left off with the 80-20 rule and the work-life balance with Jordan and how big of a deal that is, I, I think it was a very natural transition to talk about leads right away because it's one of the first things you're going to need to deal with when you become a licensed salesperson. Do not think that you will not have leads. If you have even any friends or family in the area, once you get licensed to sell real estate, you're always going to automatically have something. And as soon as you get listings, those listings will lead to calls from people that you've never met and never heard of. And those can turn into sales. Those are leads. And if you're in a busy market, you could get a lot of leads and you need to learn how to take care of these. Because as you know, based on the 80-20 rule, not a lot of them will turn into uh, income, but some of them will. So we're going to talk about leads. This isn't going to be a very long video because we also have a wonderful guest speaker this week who will also come in and talk about lead management. So this is going to be a bit of a short one in terms of our content lecture. And that's also because we have some additional reading. There are several articles I would like you guys to look at this week. Some are a year or two old. Some are very new, but they all cover the kind of traditional things that would that have staying power in real estate that even if the article was five years old, it would still be relevant. So. Uh, and we'll get to those readings once we get you introduced to these topics. So uh, this week we're going to talk about leads. We're going to talk about referrals a bit at the end and just general, uh, generally speaking, how this can build your business if you take good care of them. It's only about business building if you take good care of them. So we're going to talk about this now in week seven, and then we're going to revisit that at the end of the course. Because and I don't mean to double up on things because it will be presented in a different way, and we'll talk more about CR CRM near the end of the course, um, but this is, uh, it cannot, the importance of taking care of your leads cannot be stressed enough. So what is a lead? A lead is a potential uh, income opportunity from a person, a business, somebody that's looking to do some real estate business with you. Uh, that's what a lead is, but it, it isn't real uh, income yet until something happens. It could be someone looking to sell their house, could be someone looking to buy, whatever it may be. Then referrals, are uh, people that already have qualified leads. Qualified meaning that uh, the lead is, is, you know that they're gonna do something. They're gonna sell or buy. And they're referring the business to you because they know you, you're closer to the area, something like that. Maybe it's somebody getting ready to retire and they're turning some business over. And this will result in a bit of a fee paid back to them, but it can still be easy business because they've already qualified the referral. And then how can you turn this into more leads? There's some articles, a little bit of stuff about that, but that's what we're going to talk about more in, um, in week 14. I just wanted to make sure you understood that the biggest part of building your business is, is taking care of these leads and turning them into more business. Because once you find a good one, that means that they might do more business with you down the road. So what is CRM? I just mentioned that. Okay, it's short for customer relationship management, or in this case, client relationship management. And we will talk about that in week 14 as well, the difference between clients and customers. Um, once somebody is a client, it means they're in an agreement with you or your brokerage to work exclusively with you. So we want to manage anybody who has been a client in, in a way that isn't intrusive, but, but lets them know that we're still there and you want to keep in touch and stuff like that. And you, but what, what do you do with people that just, just randomly get in touch with you? There's, there's different ways to handle that, and we'll talk about some of that uh, today. So... CRM is an approach uh, to manage a company's interaction, or, or you, if, you, if you're an entrepreneur and you're in real estate sales, it would be your own interaction with your current and potential customers. It uses data analysis about customers' history with a company to improve business relationships, specifically focusing on customer retention and ultimately driving sales growth. So this is, according to Wikipedia, that's the standard definition. This usually comes in the form of software, but as a licensed realtor, you will automatically get some form of CRM when you become a member of a real estate board because I am not aware of any real estate board across the country that doesn't have a back-end system where you can automatically have listings emailed to your clients. And this is, and you'll hear an interesting story from our guest speaker about that, that 
sometimes people don't need you to call them all the time and stay in touch. Sometimes just that automated email makes them feel like you're paying attention to them, even though you're not even doing anything because it's automated. So that would come from a CRM program. So you do get uh, CRM utilities as a result of just being a realtor and paying your fees. You don't have to get an external program to manage this. You can come up with your own way to manage it, but there should be some way to take care of all these people with especially the ones within your spheres of influence. Okay, that's a huge deal, spheres of influence. We talked about that earlier on in the course, which is why I segued right into lead management before we got into the marketing side of things, because this in a sense is marketing. Um, so that's what CRM is. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later in this short podcast, but um, first we wanna, we wanna focus on where are these leads? Okay, so where are they coming from? All right, once again, the 80%, and in one of the articles I actually included, I think the author referred to it now in real estate as, as being closer to 90%, okay? They are people you know. So you can do all the social campaigning you want. You can make the slickest, awesomest looking website. You can be on every bus bench and on the back of buses and billboards all over a big city market. You can put your name everywhere and that will improve your brand recognition and people will know who you are, but that doesn't automatically mean they're gonna do business with you. The 80% of your income is gonna come from that small select group of people that know you, trust you, they just automatically will be working with you. And even if you're not the best real estate salesperson ever and you're just getting started, you're gonna have some of those people right away and you need to take care of them. So it's important to know that's where you start. Don't jump right out of the tracks, spending tons of money on advertising and marketing. Get a little income under your belt by starting with the people you know, seeing who might be doing some real estate business and reminding them that you're in the business now, stuff like that. People you've done business with. This doesn't necessarily mean people you've done real estate business with. This could be your hair hairdresser. I just sold the, the, the woman who cuts my hair, uh, just somebody in Dashwood, she does an awesome job. I, I, every time I go in there, she's talking me up about real estate. She wants to know about the market, what's going on. And eventually this led to my listing her house with her husband and her family. And once it sold, they were also buyers through me for a house they purchased in another town. So it, this is, and that had nothing to do with me doing real estate business with them. That had to do with the fact that I'm always in there. I'm, I'm getting my hair cut with her. My kids go there. I give her nice tips and she knows other real estate people, but she chose to work with me because I work with her. So it could be people you've done business with. It could be a former boss, uh, somebody that works for you. Um, sometimes you'll have jobs and in real estate, you'll have extra jobs. And it could be your landscapers. It could be builders in the area. It could be um, somebody you've used to build your house. And now you're in real estate and they might be doing... So I, I've One of my best clients ever is somebody that Initially, I was talking to about a renovation and then they ended up buying a bunch of lots for me and now I, have, I do like five or six deals with this guy a year. So, but it wasn't per se something having to do with me being a licensed salesperson that started that. So people you've done business with, meaning any kind of business, not just real estate. So people you're associated with in a professional setting that already have a level of trust with you as a professional, as a business person, will then maybe be willing to work with you and say, oh, you do real estate now? Well, everything went well with the other thing we did together. So sure, let's work together with real estate. Uh, family for sure, but I don't put them at the top of the list. I don't consider people you know, just family. People you know could be uh, somebody you know through, like I've done a lot of business with people that I kiteboard with uh and, and real estate business and that doesn't mean it's a result of me doing other business with them in the past although some of them went way back when i had the wakeboard shop i did sell them equipment but it's just the fact that i'm close with them i'm not necessarily friends with them but and i do do business with my friends that's a little dicey doing business with friends but in terms of real estate that's it's not like you're going into an endeavor like you're starting a business with your friends real estate transactions are it, they're, when they're over, they're done. I mean, and it, well, unless you have issues, but most of the time I've worked with friends, it's gone pretty well. So people I know, meaning people my age, people that are out there buying houses, that might not necessarily be family, but family is definitely another one. And I always try and give them a deal, but people like my grandparents are, they refuse not to pay me more commission, right? My, 
my uh, my wife's grandmother. I've, I'm charging her nothing, but she's insisting on paying me. So it's, it's just that kind of thing. Okay, so I've already given you some examples, but now I want you to try and think of some more in your actual life. So out of this list of three bullets, having nothing to do with real estate, can you think of at least five people that could fall into one of those categories? I'm sure you can. So even though you haven't become a professional real estate salesperson yet, you need to start thinking about managing these leads because they are leads in advance of your even starting in the business because you do not want to start with no income. You want to have something ready to go and that's going to be the people in this kind of list, okay? Here's one that I used. I put it right at the top of the list, of course. Your dog groomer, um, uh, nails, aesthetics. People that do the kind of service, they, those are always the people that get you talking, okay, about real estate and stuff. Um, regulars, uh, especially, yeah, if you, if you go to a restaurant and you're a regular at a restaurant, you'd be surprised how much the owner wants to know what you've been up to and what's going on with real estate and... There's a restaurant in Grand Bend. I just started eating there. I love the place. Now I've listed the business for sale because none of the other realtors were going in there. Apparently I eat more than any of them. So the guy, neighbors, for sure, neighbors. Okay, people that you've gotten close with just based on the fact that you live near them, it's going to burn you pretty badly if they list their house for sale and you wake up one morning and somebody else's sign is on that house when you literally live right next door to them. And that's going to have your other neighbors questioning, wow, why wouldn't they have chosen Mike when he's living right there? He must not be the best realtor. So you want to be on top of that with your neighbors. Um, going to the gym. Gym is like, man, I <laughs> I have stories about the gym when I used to go to the gym more and I was in great shape. There's a gym in Grand Bend. I used to sit there and talk to people doing cardio and we'd talk and talk and talk and then real estate would come up and they'd want to know what's selling, what's going on, everything that's happening. And at that point, I wasn't doing as much business, but there, there's still been several leads that I've gotten out of the gym because I'm there working out and I end up talking to people and they end up calling me with questions and then it turns into a listing or a sale. Uh, so those are some, some good examples. And I know I'm go going through this kind of quickly, but as you can see, if we go back to the slide, you didn't have to do any work to have this stuff happen in your life. This is already there. So when I talk about lead management, right as soon as we start getting into the business side of things, right after we're done with weeks one through six, I'm right into lead management. That's because as soon as you start, you already have leads. You just might not know it yet. And you need to take care of these leads. And that's the point of this podcast. So trust is a huge thing. Okay. So if you want these leads to go with you, you, you need to establish this trust. And this is where it, it, it is more difficult to get the new leads. So here you don't need as much trust, but you still need it. And hopefully you've established it through many conversations, through different types of business, different types of interactions and stuff. But market trust versus personal trust are two very different things. So market trust meaning I'm coming to you because I heard you do real estate and I want to know, I want to trust that you know exactly what's going on with this market. Okay. So that people that don't have personal trust in you and don't know you personally, that's going to be harder to get them on board than it is for the personal trust people. So to establish that market trust, you need these guys back from the other slide to prove to the people that only have only see you on a market level that you can do business in your local area that you, you can get stuff done. They've seen your signs, they're starting to pop up, you're getting stuff sold, there's sold signs on them, your name is all over the place all of a sudden. It might take years, but it could happen. That's done through people who personally trusted you, really without even having to question much of your knowledge about real estate. They knew you are in business, they know I'm a marketing professor. So then, as a result of using and harvesting those leads and using them to the maximum, like exploiting them, not in a negative way, but making sure that you're all over those tight leads that are close to you, that will help you create market trust with those brand new people that don't know anything about you personally. They just see your name everywhere. And it, it, that can take a long time to establish, okay? So when you meet these new ones, you have to nurture that relationship. When I'm working with my grandmother, I don't have to nurture the pre-sale relationship. When it's time for her to do some real estate, she's calling me. There is no question about it. That's the, and there are lots of other people on this list from the previous slide that would do the same thing. 
when I start to get those new leads, that'll be the result of me being doing a good job working with these people. I'm going to have to take care of that lead from the beginning. You got to call them back. You got to get back to them quickly. You got to give them what they ask for. You have to be polite. You have to be open minded with them. Don't tell them that they're wrong when you know they are. Uh, ease them into it, right? People always want more money than their, for their house than it's going to be worth. So you're not the bad guy by telling them that. You use other listings that have sold. Not, they don't have to be yours because what, once you become a licensed salesperson, you're going to have access to all that data to show them this is where the market is. Here's a house just like yours and it sold for a lot less money. So we got to figure out where yours falls into this pocket. You have to be there, but there with, with quality information, showing them that you're knowledgeable. You have to nurture that relationship. You, you can give them gifts. You can kind of send them notes and send them cards and stuff like that. It, it's All of this is maintaining the relationship. It's Remember, this is a commission sales career. You have to be a salesperson. Um, this is something I wanted to talk about in terms of trust because I'm not going to sit here and tell you that my f footprint, digitally speaking, uh, has made a bunch of my business uh, that, that my digital footprint is that has, has basically created a sh uh, I almost swore maybe a ton a, a, a crap load of business for me because it hasn't but when you're trying to get a listing if you don't have that footprint you don't have that credibility with these people that think it does do more than it actually does because they don't know going back to the slide again that 80% of the business when you're a successful realtor is basically coming from your sphere of influence, okay? From your, from your spheres of influence if you have multiple. Um, so you do want that digital footprint because that creates trust. So because even though most of your business will come from the 80%, you still want to pick up those peripheral deals, right? You still want to get those ones on the side that are just nice surprises. And if you have no digital footprint, that can really hurt you. At the very beginning of your career, you can be in the process of building that because you're gonna get business from your yes people anyway. And a lot of the people on that previous slide would have been yes people as we discussed at the beginning of the course. Uh, but your digital footprint, it, it's important. Whether, it, whether you can trace it back to direct sales or not, it is important. And I can trace, Instagram has definitely gotten me listings and Facebook has gotten me leads that have led to sales. So that have led to purchases. So. It does work, but not to the degree people think it does. That business is all coming from my spheres of influence, but you still need it because it establishes trust. It gives you credibility by having that. And if you don't want to go to the trouble of making your own website all from scratch, and mine does serve some pretty good purposes. We'll talk more about that in week uh, nine. Uh, but it, it, most brokerages, once you sign on with them, will have a program where you can just have your own little website cranked out as part of, as like a, a side component to the brokerage's main website. So you should have all those places, like properties as I call them, you should have those properties online, your social properties, your website, not because it's gonna make you all these sales, but because it establishes trust. And one of the biggest deals in harvesting new leads, once you run out of that 80%, is showing them that they can trust you, that you are, you have a place in this market. Um, starting by harvesting online, yes or no? I mean, I'm telling you not to start at all with any of these new leads. I'm telling you to start with these leads, okay? But once you run out of those, which will happen fairly quickly, should you run with online leads or should you go? I, I say not really. I, I think you're, you're much better off doing face-to-face -face type of stuff. I know this sounds very old school, but going back to the people that did work from the previous slide and asking them if they know anybody else that might be looking to sell, you're, you're happy to give them maybe like a little bit of a marketing fee. You can't start paying people that aren't licensed real estate salespeople referral fees, but you can pay people to do marketing for you if they get you leads. Um, and that that is typically a better way than to just grab everything you can online and constantly be on those people trying to get something back out of them. I mean, emailing is another great thing that you can do. Um, and that's part of your digital footprint too, but you don't want to start with that. So start by harvesting online. I, I, my inclination is to say no, unless you're extremely skilled at being an influencer and, and, and running campaigns in social media, and you can really rake in some, some qualified leads 
your best bet is to stick with those spheres of influence and see if they can expand you outward from there. And then still have the digital footprint running at the same time. But you know, you don't need to be spending money on that until you really start to have until you really need to start impressing some of your bigger clients. Um, here's some tips not to miss. Okay, so I'm gonna now uh, kind of ask you to pause the video and, and take a quick look at each of these articles as I'm sort of opening them up and going through them. And then we're going to kind of wrap up fairly quickly here because, again, you have you already have week seven. Well, not already, but you will have week seven video content from your week seven guest speaker. And I've given you a fair amount of additional reading this week. So this is not going to be a very long lecture. You usually don't even have two videos. So that's that's what's going on here. Um, and we're at about. Yep, yeah, we'll still keep this under half an hour. So um, this particular uh, article, let's pull each one up and then I'm going to give you my quick synopsis on them. There, there's not a ton of great articles out there on this topic. Most of them are all trying to pitch some sort of lead management software. And other, otherwise, they're, they're all trying to advise you about ways to get leads, okay? And, and getting leads, more than anything, is just working the leads that you already have. I mean, it, I could not be more clear about that, that your spheres of influence are going to be the, the vast majority of your business. Um, but if I was to specifically talk about social, it would be Facebook and Instagram are the only things that have gotten me any relevant leads. And then signage, having your signs up. So, And we'll get more into that in the next few weeks of marketing. But these are about like just managing leads. So here's one that doesn't get into CRM specifically, but gives you some high quality tips um, that, 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 that just makes sense. So keep everything in one place. It doesn't have to be a CRM software. It doesn't have to be anything specific, but keep it in one place, okay? Collaborate with a team. And this this doesn't mean you have to be working with a team of realtors. I know a lot of these articles go on about the benefits of starting a team. If, you're, if you have a mortgage broker that you work with regularly or a lawyer that you work with regularly, always be collaborating with them and let them know that you're interested in business that they might be able to send you to. Okay, so a lot of the leads will come, and that goes back to people I do business with. I have a lawyer that I send so much business to in Grand Bend that I think if he didn't send new leads to me, he'd probably just feel guilty about it. So it's, it's, and he's hooked me up on a few occasions too with some legal fees and stuff like that for closings I've done, real estate stuff. I'm not legal fees, not trouble or anything, just doing our wills and things like that. He's been very generous to me because I sent him a lot of business. So that's that's collaborating with a team too. doesn't necessarily have to be a team of realtors. Um, automate your lead distribution. So when you sign up to be a real estate salesperson with a local real estate board, your backend login will do that for you automatically without paying any extra for any special CRM software. You should, oh, I'm so bad at putting people, the prospector, we, the system we use is called Prospector. And you just set them up. You can choose how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, where where they want to see stuff. And I'm just I'm terrible at keeping up to date with putting people in the prospector. Right? And, and if I do, then I don't have to do anything, and they might reach out to me. Um, make sure no lead ever falls through the cracks. That happens to me all the time. Get ready for improved tracking and accountability. So uh, analytics online with websites, with your social, even with the the prospector systems that I use with the plugins I use for WordPress. So that's CRM too. I have a plugin for my WordPress website. They're really good at telling me who's going where, how long they've stayed on pages, all this stuff, and then maximize your past clients. So this to me should be at the top of the list. And that's one of the reasons I wanted you to go through this article because I like every single suggestion she has. And I like that she's not pitching any specific type of CRM. But I think that one at the bottom should be at the top of the list because that's where most of your business is going to come from. So I've given you several articles like that. And where I say let's discuss, let's evaluate, that's kind of a self-study type of thing, okay? So I want you to pause the video for each of these articles. No, you don't necessarily have to do that with this one, but maybe the next one. So I'm going to pull it up, okay? And then I want you to pause the video, take a look at it, and then I'm going to give you my two cents, and then we're going to do the next one. Within five minutes, we're going to be done here. So here's the next article. Okay, so pause the video, give it a read, because this is not a long uh, podcast, This is, and, and then come back to me. Okay, thank you for doing that. So this is a, a list of 10. All these are lists, right, of, of 10 things. Here's the list of 10, okay? And I'm not gonna go through the details of each. Once again, what I like about this article is that it's not pitching any specific platform 
It's not trying to influence you to buy anything. It's just, it's giving you, um, uh, you know, and, and the campaign creators, I mean, these guys are, like, if you go back to their main website, like, they they do offer a level of service for people to try and help them promote their businesses. Uh, but that that's this article is very unbiased, and that's why I liked it. It's um, it's undated. I believe it's quite new based on some of the stuff I'm seeing in here because Zillow is taking over in the states now, and they're talking about that there. But uh, customer, this is one of the main reasons I picked this one because not a lot of these articles talk about feedback, and I'm terrible. I get all these great testimonials. People send me these emails. Oh my gosh, you've been so good. I get surveys filled out at Royal Opate. All of that stuff should be on my website in one centralized location where new leads that don't know me yet could look at that because that will establish trust. I didn't even mention that in that slide here, um, that, uh, and that should be in there really. Um, testimonials, okay? You know what testimonials are. This is customer, and they could be good or bad. You'd wanna use the good ones, but that's customer feedback, testimonials, okay? So you should use that. Google reviews, stuff like that. Um, you should definitely be using that uh, to your advantage. And, and I don't, um, and I really should be. So that establishes trust. That's a good way to establish trust. Google reviews, direct emails, uh, surveys. I get all kinds of things filled out on me and they're always pretty good. Most of the people that were unhappy with me apparently didn't bother leaving a review, which is usually the opposite. You, the bad ones always leave the reviews, but you wanna save that stuff and you wanna put it in the central location. So. I like that suggestion and then uh, using social media to see awareness. I mean, that's the biggest thing with social media. It may not lead to sales, but it's going to give you credibility. It's going to increase your brand awareness. It's going to get you out there. Um, break up your, use a database and segment up your leads and you can rate them. And I think our guest speaker, I, I asked him to talk about, he had this rating system that he, he'd come up with on his own. And I asked him to talk about that when he comes in. So I'm hoping he does. Uh, video marketing, which is huge, okay, and I, I, this has become a big part of my business. Uh, local presence, so, and, and the list goes on. It's a lot of the stuff I've already talked about, and you may encounter questions on the test that do ask you about some of these articles. So let's go through these last two. Um, this next one here, okay, has a list of seven steps, and it's more for kind of new people new to the business, Okay, which, which is another reason I really like this one because it's geared for people like you that if you choose to get into real estate, you'll be brand new. First thing you should do is understand, what, see there, 89% is from the people you know. Okay, and then number two is start with those people. Then it says meet new people. So, because meeting new people, while they may, those particular people might not be automatically leads, they, they might know somebody who is. Okay, talk to strangers. Lots of neat suggestions in here. It talks about CRM. Create a strategy for strengthening your relationships and uh, put everything into workflow. So use processes. We talked a lot about that with uh, in week five, one of our sales guys, he was all about processes. It makes or breaks your business. And this kind of stuff, say thank you. You know, somebody your age, leave them a nice bottle of wine, right? Maybe, maybe an older couple might appreciate like a gift certificate to a local thing inside a card and, and just hand write something, make it personal, say thank you. Um, I do that stuff all the time and, and people remember that stuff. And you can see all these articles are all trying to get your information, right? Reading an article about leads, of course it's gonna try and generate a lead from that article, why wouldn't it? And I like that, I, I'm happy to use that material in my course because of that, I'm, I'm encouraging that. And then the last one I used here um, also deals with leads. It, it's, uh, it's another list, it provides uh, 15 more items so one of my biggest lists so this is like a kind of a more comprehensive list and you'll see a lot of repeats in here and that's one of the questions I asked do you see anything that's coming up more than once those are probably the more important things and you're gonna see in this article and I'm not boosting content from other articles and stuff 99% of the content I generate in these notes is my own content um, and you'll see a lot of the things that I've discussed repeated in some of these content handwritten notes comes up again but I'm always talking about developing a niche um, I'm not sure what Redfin, I, I'm not sure about the power of that. It's, it's, um, this is a, it's, they're probably trying to plug them. That's one of those lead generating kind of things. Don't neglect leads. That's, that's a big problem of mine. Ooh, that's a good one. Although I do find they get heavily targeted and kind of get annoyed sometimes. 
So just another list of some good suggestions. And overall, out of these four articles, you, you couldn't ask for much more. These guys are kind of covering everything. And these are suggestions that will, uh, that will be timeless in a way. So as social media evolves, as digital marketing evolves, the ideas these guys are giving you are still going to be relevant. Um, we are going to talk about this a little more in week 14. Uh, you hear a lot about Salesforce is a huge one. I didn't even list that here. A lot of people like Insightly. Um, HubSpot is a good one too. Uh, and there's, 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 I don't call, I don't consider these CRMs, but there's, there's similar to CRMs. There's a lot of, uh, social platforms like Hootsuite. It's a huge one that deal with like ongoing and recurring posts in your social platform. They're not going directly to your leads, but it's automated as well. Um, but these are some good ones that I'm seeing a lot of people talking about these days, but are these the good ones for real estate? So there's a quick article here. I'm not even going to go to it. I'll let you guys go to that. We'll talk more about it in week 14 that talks about the ones that are best for real estate. And then we finally get to referrals. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. What I will tell you is that if somebody offers you a referral, do not turn it down because you don't know, you just don't know where it might lead to. The thing about a referral is professionally speaking, we try not to send each other referrals unless we know the leads are qualified, unless they're real genuine leads, which means that sort of legwork is already done. So if somebody sends me a referral, I will almost always say yes, unless I determine based on something in the description of this person that it's going to be a pain in the butt uh, because that referral could lead to additional business down the road for me. Um, and then I would keep sending a referral fee back to the person who sent it. I also am happy to send referrals. I, I very often have people looking in Windsor. I grew up in the Detroit area. I have stuff going on down there, but I'm not going to drive to Windsor and show houses. So if I refer that business to someone I trust in Windsor, maybe another Royal LePage agent, maybe just someone I know, I have a friend that does real estate down there. So I just send most of it to her. Um, it, it she'll give me 25% of the commission she earns. And basically all I had to do was give her somebody's contact info and say they're ready to go. And then she does all the work and I get a cut of it. So the beauty of referrals isn't necessarily in the referrals you get, but the referrals you send that work out because there's so much less work. I know people that are in, they, they basically just harvest leads and send out referrals as a career. Um, I don't think that's going to be as profitable as actually selling the real estate yourself as a realtor, but it's, it referrals are really cool and it can be a good way to manage leads when you get overwhelmed. So sometimes I'll send out referrals even for London because I've got so much going on in Grand Bend and I'm teaching at the college and I don't want this job to enter, ever interfere with that. So I'll say, you know what? I'm not in London as much in the spring and the summer because sometimes I might only be teaching a few days a week in the summer and then I'm doing development work. So I'll send referrals to some of my people in London. And if they work out, I didn't have to do much and it's done. So that's the beauty of referrals is that they, they can help you manage leads too when you get a little overwhelmed by sending them out. Um, getting them too is a good thing, as I said, because it can lead to, to new business. So that is the bulk of what I wanted to discuss here in this podcast. It should be in the neighborhood of a half an hour. Ooh, almost not too bad. Um, and just remember that this is not your only video for this week. You will also have the guest speaker video where Greg Baxter, uh, also part of the real estate industry, he does mortgages. He's going to come in and talk about his lead management style and some of the things that worked for him. And you will see him echo a lot of the things that I discussed in this lecture. So uh, remember, main theme here from today, right when you start, you will already have leads. You just have to recognize that they're there. And from that point forward, you can use a lot of the tips and a lot of the information we provided here to harvest more from those leads and do a better job managing the ones you already have. So don't forget to watch the guest speaker video. You're going to have to watch the video in order to do the assignment. The assignment specs will be posted with the video as soon as the video is done. And it should be due then near the end of that week once it's posted. So enjoy that assignment. It's just a three percenter, but it, those are always kind of fun ones. And I will see you in week eight. Thanks for listening.